This is going to be a tough one to talk about because this thing is huge. It also doesn't fit in the cutting board that I use for these videos. Plus, all the magic is kind of on the front, and this is a top-down video. I don't know how to do this, but you saw the title of this video. We're talking about ultrasonic cleaning, and I've been doing a lot of it. Initially, I was just going to do a video where I just try it out, and I did record that video. But I've learned a lot since then, and I felt like I should just talk about it more than just do it and then not really give you that much information about it. If you're just doing a mod or even like two or three, you don't need an ultrasonic cleaner. I mean, most people aren't buying broken Game Boys like I do to fix them and then mod them. And if you are one of those people, you're probably going after broken ones that are just bad screens and not like bad buttons or a bad speaker or whatever it may be. And I buy these in lots that are just broken. And to be honest, a lot of these just need a good clean. Not all of them. Some of them are terrible, unfixable, disgusting. And sometimes I get lots like my latest GBA lot was terrible and I really regretted my purchase. Especially if you buy from someone who's not a good person and then they just throw only corroded boards and a lot of 10. Those are awful people. You are the scum of the earth. But Pretty much the number one thing I do when I get in my broken Game Boys is I tear them apart and I clean them. And for a while I would test them before I did anything with them. Then I would clean them and retest them. And then I started cleaning them and then testing them. And then I started cleaning them, replacing the obviously bad things like the battery connectors if they were corroded, the volume wheels if they wouldn't spin, things like that. And then just reflowing all of the things that are good or probably you're good, that might just not be functioning well because it's old solder, like the headphone jack or even the power boards. This board is two years older than me. Sometimes you just gotta treat these boards like a day old pizza. Just reheat it and it'll be fine. And then one day I got in a rusty Game Boy Advance SP. And if you follow me on Twitter, I posted about it. And I was like, wow, RIP to this thing, because it is just disgusting. It, it does not look savable. Spoiler alert, I saved it. I didn't make a video on it. I, I tried to make a video on it. I have so much B-roll for it, but I stopped recording halfway through the video and I picked up recording once I had some hope, but in the end, it just didn't flow. And I knew if I just said, and then I did this thing instead of showing it, people wouldn't care about that as a video. So I'm talking about it here and there's probably a ton of B-roll on screen for this video. But what started that process for saving that Game Boy was my mom's ultrasonic cleaner. <laughs> the SP was small enough to fit in the one that she has for her jewelry, so I borrowed it and it worked. It didn't fix it immediately, but it cleaned a lot of the dirt and grime off. Ultrasonic cleaners are actually meant to shake the rust off of metal, which is crazy. And paired with the right cleaner, it can really get PCBs clean. And I know what a lot of you are thinking. You're like, Jake, you're not supposed to get electronics wet. And that is true. You shouldn't just go dunking electronics in water. But if there's no power connected, no speakers connected, and you don't plan on turning this on until it's completely dry and you actually dry it in a timely manner, it's fine. That's actually how you clean these things. Even 99% isopropyl alcohol is 1% water. Isopropyl alcohol just dries fast. But isopropyl alcohol is extremely flammable and you should not be using that in an ultrasonic cleaner. For that, I used some industrial Simple Green. It's called Simple Green Crystal, but that was giving me a ton of headaches. So I'm going to try just regular Simple Green next time. But it did work great and I heavily, heavily watered that thing down. You can do like one part cleaner, 30 parts water, and this is like a 15 liter ultrasonic cleaner, which I should kind of explain that. I just started with my mom's ultrasonic cleaner, and then I went and got a bigger one, and that was what I used to make my initial video where I just tested things out, and that's where I learned to uh, not include speakers when you do that cleaning because it will ruin the speakers. Yeah, that was kind of an obvious thing, I guess, but you know, the science, I tried it for you, so you don't have to. And then I ended up liking it so much, I got the giant 15 liter one. And that is the best 160 bucks I've ever spent. I will link it down below. But I'll also link a smaller one down below that makes more sense. But honestly, unless you fix a lot of electronics, I don't think it's necessary. Isopropyl alcohol will probably do the trick. But I have fixed hundreds and hundreds of Game Boys across all of the models. And 
while this doesn't necessarily speed things up, it definitely helps fix these things. And even as I'm recording this, I don't know how I really want to structure this video. I think I just want to share my process of how I work on these things and how the ultrasonic cleaner fits into my new flow. <laughs> I'm still not testing these boards when I get them in. When I got these pockets in, I tore them down and I immediately started reflowing all the solder. If there was obvious corrosion somewhere, I took care of it by removing the part that was corroded. I don't know if I had swapped either of these, but usually it's the battery terminals. And I reflowed the solder on the headphone jack, the power jack, the power board, the capacitors, any of the solder points that really looked dull in both the contrast and volume wheels, as well as cleaning up the power switch. That's a go-to move of mine, which I think everybody should do. <laughs> it's probably time you clean your power switch, even if your Game Boy is working fine, assuming you've never done that before. And it's always good to reflow the solder on the link port too. For the Game Boy Advances, I'd be reflowing the L and R buttons, and for the SP, I'd be reflowing the charge port, battery connector, pretty much anything that's like vital, <laughs> I'm gonna reflow the solder. If you clean the crap out of your cartridge connector and it still doesn't read games, reflowing the cart slot might help. But with an ultrasonic cleaner, this has actually helped my cart slot. I have a story about fixing a cart slot, but I'll save that for the end because I, I do wanna share my whole process because once I'm done reflowing all that solder, fixing anything that needs to be fixed. I like to wipe down the button pads just with a paper towel and isopropyl. Try and get it shiny. If it's being stubborn, I might whip out the fiberglass pen, but I'm trying not to do that as much because I don't know how bad it wears on these pads. I've heard that you shouldn't do it all the time, but then it works really well, so I want to use it. So wiping it down with alcohol and the paper towel, it definitely helps. And usually by that time, there's been so much flux all across this board from reflowing everything, even if I'm cleaning it with isopropyl alcohol, it just is sticky and gross. I don't like it. So at that point is when I throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner. If it still has a speaker that's good, I remove it. I leave the wires on just because to me, it's easier to resolder to the actual speaker than to resolder the wires in the holes there. But usually the wires are so worn that they fall apart anyways. So you might end up having to solder on both ends anyways. <laughs> if it's covered in corrosion, I tried it. It doesn't really do anything. It might make the corrosion cleaner, but it's still gonna be corroded. Really the only way to take care of that is like CLR, but then CLR might eat your board. But then again, the corrosion probably ate your board already. I wouldn't dunk this thing in it, but maybe a little dripping on it. I don't know. Ultronic cleaner, not gonna fix that. A little rust, yeah, it actually will. Not a ton of rust, but then again, I fixed that SP by doing that. I also had to do other things to that SP, let's be clear. I had to reflow all of the solder on that SP. I swapped every button on that thing. I swapped the charge port, I swapped the link port, I swapped the battery connector, and I just put flux across the entire board and heated it up with my soldering iron. I think I even swapped out the cart slot on that thing too. And I still had to connect a bodge wire or two to fix that finally, but it is working and it's gonna be my personal SP. <laughs> and I kept the shell, I cleaned it up, but I kept it and it looks gross, but I love it. Anyways, and once the cleaning part is done, I rinse off the cleaner just with the sink water and then I give it an isopropyl alcohol bath. I literally just put isopropyl alcohol in here, 99%, just put one of these in there, fill it up so it's above the board and then I'll let it soak in there. I'll shake it around, usually go like this, flip it over, make sure it's getting everywhere in there, deep in there, so we can get all that water and just soak it up into the isopropyl so it dries as fast as possible when we take that out. And then I pretty much let it sit for 24 hours in an open air environment, sitting on a towel. I shake it out too when I'm done. This board has been fully reflowed and fixed and everything and it is so shiny i would actually eat off of this thing but then i'd have to clean it again so i'm not gonna do that but it's so shiny dude look at that it is brand new it's like it came out of nintendo's factory yesterday it's awesome and there have been a couple boards since then that like it just there might be some some sort of dirt preventing something from happening and the old sonic cleaner can clean in ways that I'm just not able to with a toothbrush and isopropyl alcohol. Heck, I can't even get into the DS cart slot. 
without completely tearing it apart. And at that point, I would just get a new car slot. <laughs> it might be able to save a charge port or a button, a connector, something. Because I had an SP that I was working on forever over the summer. If you don't know, last year I made a video where I fixed every common issue on the Game Boy Color. And I put so much time and effort into that video. And before I even posted it, I started working on an SP that had pretty much every problem wrong with it. And I was going over how to fix all of those problems in one big video, just like the GBC video. But I had started that before I posted it. And that's the first lesson I learned with this one. Don't start the second video in the series if the first video in the series isn't confirmed to be decent. That video still has not done very well. And I was already working on the next version of it with the SP. And then I started to struggle with fixing that SP once and for all. There was still one thing that I could not fix no matter how hard I tried, and it was the cart slot. And I think that was the project that kicked off my really bad luck from last summer. Because for a while, even though that first video did terrible, I was determined to finish it because I had done so much to that SP. I had put so much work into it. It was driving me up a wall and I wanted to fix it, but I couldn't. And then I couldn't do the Ultimate PS1. And then I couldn't do the Game Boy Pocket Vivert. I think there was another project somewhere in there that I struggled to do. And it's just like, man, can I catch a break? <laughs> the answer was no. No, I could not. But after I started messing around with ultrasonic cleaning, I grabbed that SP because I kept it. I'm still determined to fix it. So I threw it in there. I'm like, why not? The cart slot was so dirty. And yeah, I could have swapped that cart slot out. I probably should have. But at that point, I was not confident with hot air like I am now. I mean, I'm not even that confident now, but, but I've already swapped a cart slot recently. So I could do it now if I needed to. I also have a history of trying to swap cart slots on these bad boys, and it has not gone well. Eventually, you will see that video, which I'm pretty sure I started that video in 2021. I think I'm going to try and finish it this year. We'll see. You'll know what I'm talking about eventually. But I threw that SP in the old Sonic Cleaner, and it works now. It just, it works. It was able to clean whatever gunk was on these pins, and it works. I didn't have to risk ruining the cart slot or the board in general. Because if I rip any of those pads, it's probably going to rip multiple pads. That's just how it goes when you replace cart slots. It's not that easy. Desoldering is just hard, man. It is hard, and I hate doing it. Especially when it's like this style, where it's on top of the board. If it was through hole like this, I feel like it's so much easier to remove through hole things. Either way, that's a lot of pins to desolder. <laughs> but the ultrasonic cleaner just does things that I can't do. And it's so awesome. Maybe there's someone in your family, whether it's your grandma or someone who likes jewelry or likes to clean watches or their glasses or something. If they have one and you've got some Game Boys that are just toast, maybe rusty, something, you had no hope for it, maybe give it a shot. You're going to want some non-toxic, non-flammable cleaner that is PCB safe. And pretty much the only thing that I know of that works for this is Simple Green. The regular stuff you can find at pretty much any grocery store. I say that and I looked at my local grocery store and I could not find it. <laughs> but it's on Amazon and maybe I'll throw a link down below. You can get the crystal stuff, but that gave me a headache. Uh, I, most cleaners will probably give you a headache if you sniff it for too long. But to conclude this very messy video about cleaning, I love my old Sonic Cleaner. I think it has worked wonders. I think it will continue to work wonders. But like a lot of the tools that I use, it's not necessary if you're doing one or two Game Boys. If you want to devote your life to fixing old electronics, it doesn't even have to be Game Boys. The, one of the reasons why I bought a giant one was not just to do like six Game Boys at a time, but was so I could put my Famicom in it. I literally put my Famicom in it to try and fix it before I even really took a good stab at it. It didn't fix it, but <laughs> it could have. It got it nice and clean. It's going to be one of my go-to tools. I love it. It's awesome, but it's not necessary. Oh, and by the way, 